great to be back. I mean, quite a lot's happened in the last year. Yes. <laughs> what, so, what, what's sort of the biggest shift, do you think? Oh, wow. I mean, um, it's just so much has happened. As you said, it's just, it feels like we packed in 10 years in one year. I think a lot's happened. I mean, f- f- certainly for us, uh, the, the progress of the models. Um, we've just released Gemini 3, mm. which we're really happy with. Um, the the cap- multimodal capabilities, all of those things have just advanced really well. And then probably the thing, I, I guess, over the summer that I'm uh, very excited about is world models being mm. advanced. I'm sure we're going to talk about yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. We will get onto all of that yeah. stuff in a bit more detail in a moment. Um, I remember the very first time that I interviewed you for this podcast and you were talking about the root node problems, mm. about this idea that you can use AI to kind of unlock these downstream benefits. Um, and you've made pretty good on your promise, I have to say. Yes. Do you want to give us an update on, on where we are with those? Where, what are the things that are just around the corner and, and, and the things that we've that you've sort of solved or near solved? Yeah, well, of course, time? obviously, the big proof point was, was AlphaFold and sort of crazy to think we're coming up to like five year sort of anniversary of, of AlphaFold being sort of announced to the world, AlphaFold 2 at least. So that was the proof, I guess, that it was possible to do these root node type of problems. And we're looking, we're exploring all the other ones now. I think material science, uh, I'd love to do a room temperature superconductor mm. um, and, uh, you know, better batteries, these kinds of things. I think that's that's on the cards, uh, better materials of all sorts. We're also working on fusion because um, it's a new partnership that's been announced. Yeah, Fusion, right? yeah, we've just announced partnership with a deep one. We we already were collaborating with them, but it's a much deeper one now with Commonwealth Fusion, who you know I think are probably the best startup uh, uh, working on at least traditional tokamak uh, reactors. So they're probably closest to to having something uh, uh, viable, and we want to help accelerate that. Uh, you know, helping them contain the plasma in the magnets, and maybe even some material design there as well. So that's exciting. And then we're collaborating also with our quantum colleagues yeah. which they're doing amazing work uh at the at the quantum ai team at google and we're helping them with error correction codes uh where we're using our machine learning to help them and then maybe one day they'll help us <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, perfect yes exactly cycle. the fusion one is particularly i mean the difference that, that would make to the world that would be unlocked by that yeah. is, is gigantic yeah I mean, fusion's always been the holy grail. Of course, I think solar is very promising too, mm. right? Effectively using the fusion fusion reactor in the in the in the clouds in the sky. But um, I think if we could have uh, modular fusion reactors, you know, this promise of uh, almost unlimited renewable clean uh, energy. Uh, would be obviously transform everything, and that's the holy grail. And of course, that's one of the ways we could we could um, uh, help with climate. Does make a lot of our existing problems sort of disappear if we can if we can definitely. Get I mean, it opens up many. This is why we think of it as a root node. Of course, it helps directly with energy and and pollution and and so on, um, and helps with the with the climate crisis. But also, if energy really was renewable and clean and 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 super cheap, almost free, then many other things would become viable. Um, like, you know, water access, because we could have desalination plants pretty much everywhere, Mm. Uh, even making rocket fuel. uh, You know, it's just there's lots of seawater that contains hydrogen and oxygen. That's basically rocket fuel, but it just takes a lot of energy to split it out into hydrogen and oxygen. But if energy is cheap and and renewable and sort of clean, then why not do that? You know, you could have that producing 24-7. You're also seeing a a lot of change in the uh, the AI that is applying itself to mathematics, right? That You know, winning medals in the international mathematics. Olympiad. And yet at the same time, these models can make quite basic mistakes mm-hmm. in high school math. Why is there that paradox? Yeah, I think it's fascinating, actually, one of the most fascinating things and probably that needs to be fixed uh, uh, as one of the key things why we're not at AGI yet. Um, as you said, we've had a lot of success and other groups on getting like gold medals at the International Maths Olympiad. You look at those questions and they're, they're super hard questions mm. that only the top students in the world can, can do. And on the other hand, if you pose a question in a certain way, we've all seen that with with, with experimenting with chatbots ourselves uh, in our daily lives, that it can make some fairly trivial mistakes on logic problems. They can't really play decent games of chess yet, which um, is surprising. So there's something missing um, uh, uh, still from these systems in terms of their consistency. And I think that's one of the things that you would expect from a, a general intelligence and you know, an AGI system is that it would be consistent across the board. And so uh, we, sometimes people call it jagged intelligences. Mm-hmm. So they're really good at certain things, maybe even like PhD level, but then other things, they're like not even high school level. Mm-hmm. So it's very uneven still, the performances of these systems. They're very, very impressive in certain dimensions, um, but they're still pretty uh, uh, basic in others. And we've got to close those gaps. And 
you know, there are theories as to why, and depending on the situation, it could even be uh, the way that an image is is perceived and tokenized. So sometimes actually it doesn't even get all the letters that you, you know, it's when you count letters in words, um, it sometimes gets that wrong, but it may not be seeing that each individual letter. So there's sort of different reasons for some of these things uh, and each one of those can be fixed and then you can see what's left um, but I think consistency I think another thing is reasoning and thinking so uh, we have thinking systems now that at inference time they spend more time thinking and they're, they're better they're better at outputting their answers um, but it's not sort of super consistent yet in terms of like is it using that thinking time in a useful way um, to actually double check and use tools to double check what it's outputting I think we're we're on the way but maybe we're only 50% of the way there I also wonder about that that story